We'll start with uh, Nexus first. Um, again, that, that stands for the, the title of the study, National Emergency X-Radiography Utilization Study. So this was a really large-scale study. It was published in 2000, so 23 years ago, and it validated a set of criteria suggested by a dozen smaller studies carried out in the 1980s and 90s. So the patient population to apply the nexus criteria to is any patient of any age who has sustained a blunt trauma. And this is a patient complaining of neck pain. Mm -hmm. So blunt trauma, um, and I, I, I teach online and I have a, students from all over the globe. And we have to talk about that because sometimes in translation, it, it loses some meaning. Blunt trauma is just an American old radiography medical term, and it simply means um, any trauma from an external force. So typically in the emergency departments, we're talking about motor vehicle accidents or falls. So the opposite of a blunt trauma would be any penetrating trauma, like a stab wound or a gunshot injury. So those patients were excluded from application of the nexus criteria. So mostly we're looking at uh, motor vehicle accidents, bicycle accidents, um, you know, collisions with car and vehicle of any kind, a car and pedestrian or, or falls. So the nexus is um, much easier to apply than the Canadian cervical spine rule because there's just five criteria that a patient has to meet. And if they meet these criteria, they do not need radiographs. So again, remember, we're in an emergency department setting. So the five criteria are there's no posterior midline tenderness of the neck. There's no evidence of intoxication, no altered consciousness, no neurologic deficit, and no painful distracting injuries like a broken leg along with the neck sprain. So if all five criteria are met, there's a 99% sensitivity that there is no clinically significant injury in the cervical spine, and so no radiographs are needed. Mm -hmm. So that's not always the patient we're going to see in outpatient, and that's why the Canadian cervical spine rule comes in a little handier for us uh, working in uh, outpatient clinics or other inpatient facilities. So the research for the Canadian C-spine rule was published, again, 2001, so we're talking it's 22, 23 years old already. So when they published it, the article was titled The Canadian C-spine Rule for Radiography in Alert and Stable Trauma Patients. And they had C-spine in the title, so that just stuck. So everyone says Canadian C-spine, or they abbreviated to CCR. And um, if you look at the American College of Radiology's appropriateness criteria, they just call it Nexus and CCR. So both these clinical decision rules are very similar in their inclusion criteria. They, they both apply to patients who have sustained a blunt trauma, and their value is similar. They identify if the cervical spine can be cleared of significant injury and not require radiographs, or if the cervical spine cannot be cleared and require radiographs. So um, the important thing is to know uh, who you can include and who we want to exclude. The inclusion criteria for any clinical decision rule um, is, is important so that you apply it correctly. 